Hi everybody, welcome back to part 6 of the Trumpeter 1200 scale Bismarck build. Last time we got the hull uh, painted and the model up on its uh, temporary stand. So that gives a good basis to move forward with the build. And this time I'm going to be fitting the first of the Pontos wooden decks. The advanced set gives us a full set of decks including all the wooden decks on the superstructure and there are quite a few of those so uh, there's quite a lot of wooden deck work to do on this particular build but in this video I'm going to be concentrating on the upper deck uh, or the over deck as it was known and that stretches from the stem to the stern of the ship it's a big uh, element of the build and the wooden deck in the Pontos set comprises about six different sections uh, for the upper deck. So we'll be doing all of those in this episode and hopefully getting the upper deck in a position where we can start adding some of the uh, etched brass details from the Pontos set. But the first thing I'm going to be doing today before we do the deck work is to give the Trumpeter plastic deck a coat of Tamiya X22 gloss varnish and that's just to remove any traces of dust or dirt on the surface that could uh, inhibit the adhesion of the Pontos uh, wooden decks. It's a method that I used on the hood build and that was pretty successful. I've not had any problems with lifting on the hood so far. It's a, easily a year on since I applied the decks and there's not a trace of any blistering at all so what we're doing here is just giving the plastic a light coat of the X22 this is an acrylic varnish of course and we just carefully go around the deck area Try and work around the uh, mouldings that need to be left on the trumpeter kit. We need to be uh, just be a bit careful here not to get too much of the varnish on the brush. We don't want it dripping over the uh, sides of the ship and down the hull. That would ruin it. And if you watched the last couple of episodes you know how much work it took to get the camouflage scheme applied so I don't want to take any chances with that at one stage I did consider filling in the engraved uh, planking detail on the trumpet of plastic just so that it gave an even more flat finish for the wooden deck glue but I don't recall doing that with the hood in fact I'm pretty sure I didn't so you want a fairly wide brush to do this it's a, quite a large surface to cover so need a decent sized brush but also one that's going to get round all the details you don't want to flood all these mouldings Pontos also include uh, a set of waterways which run all the way around the uh, edge of the ship edge of the deck and also some extra details such as the scuppers and various uh, drains on the side of the hull so there's a bit of work to do after the wooden decks in place I'm also going to have to paint the moulded detail before we put the deck down because the uh, little boxes and the barbettes and so on actually protrude through the wooden deck so I want to paint those first otherwise you're looking at a fairly complicated masking job 
and with that the risk of damaging the wooden deck as well. So we'll paint all these details in the superstructure colour before we drop the wooden deck over the top of them. Nearly there. This is a bit of a long process but it's worth it if you're going to get the security of knowing that the decks are going to stay down. OK the gloss varnish has dried now and I just want to paint the various hull fittings that are going to show through the decks so the barbettes and all the boxes and so on. And for that I'm going to be using Tamiya's XF19. Uh, that's called Sky Grey and it's a lighter shade than the XF66 that I used uh, on the hull. And it's possible to see on virtually every photograph that you look at the difference between the lighter superstructure shades and the hull. So these two colours should give us that effect. So I'm just going to work around the model, uh, get all these barbettes painted and then we can look to fit these decks. The first of the wooden decks that I'm going to be fitting is this one which goes on the stern and goes all the way up to the secondary, the sternmost of the secondary uh, guns right the way up here. So it's a big piece of deck and what I want to check first of all is that I can clear out all the uh, spare bits of wood from the areas where we've got the raised detail on the trumpeter kit here. So all these hatches, the capstan bases and so on. And what I'm going to do is just work methodically forward and pull out the excess from the wooden deck from the top. So it just pops out like that. And obviously then when we peel the backing paper off, so they just pull out like that. And it's really important to make sure that we do clear all these uh, spaces here on the wooden deck because once we've pulled the backing sheet away and exposed the adhesive, it's very very difficult to start messing around with it. You want to get it straight onto the uh, plastic deck and get it fixed down firmly and any slight obstruction will prevent us doing that. So this is a really important step. Around these mouldings here that are very tiny uh, what look like bolt heads uh, around them and Pontos have cut those out as well so even those very slight raised uh, mouldings there would prevent the deck from seating properly. The precision of the uh, die cuts on these decks is incredible really. 
Just checking that I've got all those out, which I have. A lot of noise from the farm next door today. Got the sheep in for shearing. And I'm not sure they appreciate what's happening to them. So you'll hear that protesting for most of the day, I should think, whilst we're doing these decks. Now here we have what looks to be uh, a spare cutout that we need to take out but actually we don't because there isn't a molding in the trumpeter deck at this point and you can check about that if you just reverse the uh, wooden deck and look on the reverse of the backing paper you can see where the cutouts are because it's gone right the way through the backing but we don't have it here on this circle so we're going to leave that in place. So you need to do a constant cross check really between the uh, apparent cutouts on the Pontos wooden deck and the mouldings that we've got on the trumpeter kit. Obviously, is the barbette space for turret Dora. Again, only the centre of those apparent holes there need to be cleared. So you can see, there's quite a lot of. Uh, Spaces there to clear out. I'll just do a final check. Okay, so I'm just going to partially remove this deck from the sheet. I want to get rid of all the other parts uh, that I'm not going to be doing just yet. So I'm left with just the deck that we're applying. Now obviously the main locator for this particular section of deck is the uh, main barbette here. So that's a good reference point uh, to fit the deck up. And I'm going to remove the backing paper in two halves here. It's too much to take the whole uh, of the backing off all at once so I'm just going to remove the aft section okay so I'll start to be able to peel the backing paper off or the backing plastic I'm just going to put this back section back on and what that means is that when I start to apply the deck uh, this back end isn't going to stick and grab because this is a big section to be dealing with all at once. Now obviously I'm going to be locating the barbette first Now the thing with applying these is 
uh, not to pull them around a lot because if you just let them fall naturally they'll go uh, onto the moldings where you need it they're very accurately cut so you shouldn't have to push and pull them around So obviously if you pull them from side to side they will stretch a little bit uh, and you'll end up getting them all out of shape so just let the deck fall naturally under gravity and you can see here where I've got the backing paper reapplied it's not in danger of grabbing onto the model Pushing this down now around these hatches. I'm just using a round edge from a paintbrush here just to ease the deck down around all these mouldings. You can see at this stage how awkward it would be if you found that you hadn't taken the backing off where this moulding needs to come through the deck. You would already have had the uh, deck grab and you'd be in all sorts of trouble really. So that final check is really worthwhile just to make sure you're not going to have those difficulties. The detail on these decks is amazing really. All the edgings are very accurately uh, reproduced. All the lines of the planking and so on. And it makes an enormous difference to the model. It uh, seems to transform the model as soon as you put these decks on. You can also see uh, how it's worthwhile painting the fittings before you apply the deck. This would be an awful lot of masking up to do uh, if we hadn't done that. So uh, it's again another stage well worth taking. So at this stage, with the back of the deck uh, in place and firmed down, I'll just remove the other piece or most of the other piece of the backing sheet. And again, just let this drop down under its own weight, if you like. And the last section to come off The next section is this one which leads up to uh, this barbette so fills this space in. I'll just uh, I'll repeat the other side off camera 
Okay, ready with this last section or the last large section. There's just a little bit to put at the front here. So using the same method of before I'll just replace the backing here at the back so you can handle those without any uh, risk of affecting the glue and again I'm going to use the A bar bet to locate the deck It's gone re down really nicely at the front there. So again I'll just remove the backing from this wing piece. Okay, so that's gone down okay and at the front I should just be able to lift this off now so just smooth this down at the front now this uh, is a section that goes here forward
Then the last two filler pieces. Okay, that's all gone together really nicely. I'm pleased with how that's fitted. It's always a big step to uh, fit the first of these wooden decks. It's a bit make and break. They've gone on really nicely. Happy with those. Okay, so that's it for this one. Uh, all the wooden decks have gone on nicely. And it really does uh, transform the hull when you get the first of the decks on. It starts to look uh, obviously not like a finished ship, but it does move the build on quite a bit. And they've gone on reasonably well. The method of pre-painting the uh, parts that actually come through the wooden deck is a good one, I think. And also, I'm pretty confident that this is going to stay in place because of the varnish that I put, uh, the gloss varnish that I put on the trumpeter deck originally before uh, I fitted these. I had just one difficulty fitting the deck, and that was just ahead of the starboard third secondary turret. Uh, the section that goes in the middle, the separate small section, was just a bit too long between the uh, intervening secondary turret barbettes and it led to uh, the wooden deck just riding up a little bit and it was probably about a millimetre too wide between those two points. So to correct that what I did was cut a section out of the wooden deck in a straight line and I just inserted a piece from the scrap and if you do that really carefully with straight edges uh, you can't tell the difference so uh, that's a fix for that but it's strange how the port side went on perfectly well but I just got that slight difficulty with uh, the starboard side but anyway it's fixed now. You can see that I've just got the two main superstructure parts out. These are fantastic mouldings really that Trumpeter have come up with uh, these slide moulded uh, superstructures. And in the next episode I'm going to have a look at what modifications these two need. I'll probably start with the aft one in the next part. There's quite a lot in the Pontos instructions relating to these two structures. So uh, we'll make a start on those in part 7. I'm not going to do any more work on the decks just yet because my method when building a big ship like this is to work from the centre line outwards. Uh, and upwards as well. So I'll probably start to concentrate a lot more on these middle superstructure parts. One of the last things that I'll do are the deck details uh, on the stern and the front of the ship here. And also the waterways that go all around the edges. I'll do those right at the end when I come to fit the railings. Otherwise, being on the outside of this ship, you just run the risk of uh, catching those and pulling them off. So it's not worth it. We'll do those at the end and I'll focus on the centre part of the ship. So I'm going to have a couple of days away from the Bismarck build. Uh, whilst I get on and do some more work on the Mosquito, I want to progress that and finish it uh, in the next two or three weeks. So in the next couple of days I'll be putting the stencils on that and hopefully uh, start to do a bit more weathering on the airframe. So that'll be part 17 I think of the Mosquito build. Uh, which will be coming up in the next few days when I get those stencils fitted. And as I said, the next part of the Bismarck build, part 7, I'll be bringing you that next Friday night at 8 o'clock as usual. So I hope to see you then, everybody. Look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.